Hey everyone. So I wanted to give you a quick update on the progress of my wire EDM machine and my changes slash upgrades to the power core uh, power supply unit. So here's the machine. Uh, I'll quickly take a look at my uh, software, the control panel. Uh, basically I'm using universal G-code platform as the G-code sender. Um, it allows me to um, interface with the uh, Gerbil uh, controller uh, that's running on an AtMega 2560. Um, that's just a little ramp board on top of it. Uh, but the I've modified the Gerbil uh, firmware so that uh, in a short condition, um, it will back up along the uh, G code. Um, and so I can um, control that and see that with the Universal G-Code platform. Um, over to the right, you see um, a little uh, Python uh, GUI application that between ChatGPT and myself wrote um, this. Let's see if I get a little closer. This um, gives me just the basic information that I need for the progress of the CUD and, and how the power core is doing. Um, uh, the biggest modification that I did was uh, improve the current sensing um, and made it so that um, for every cycle of the, uh, you know, on-off cycle of the FET, um, for every cycle I can see the current um, that was during that on time. Um, so I can see the current of the, of the spark and, um, or if it was a short, I can see it as a, uh, as a larger current. So um, for, every, for every on cycle, I can determine um, if it's a spark, if it's a short, um, or if it was no spark. So from that, um, I've, I've made uh, two progress bars up there at the top, um, spark percent and short percent. So normally if you've got a really good cut and you're running about as fast as you can, you'll have about 100% uh, spark. Um, if you start to see short, um, then that's probably not good. Um, if it goes beyond 25%, right now I have it um, uh, cutting back the power. So it'll, it'll pull back the frequency. Uh, also on the display, I have um, average power in watts, uh, average spark charge uh, in microcoulombs, and then of course the temperature readouts of the FET and the power resistor. Um, below that, you can just um, change the uh, PWM frequency if you wanted to. Um, and the max micro coulomb per pulse is uh, where that short point is. So um, you'll see here in a second when I start cutting, normally the, the current will be around, um, or sorry, the, 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 the coulombs will be around like 6,000 or something. But if I start going above that, then that's going to be considered a short. So what I set that to is where the short is. Um, and then of course you can connect and then below that is messages. So in a, an over temperature temp, uh, situation or um, if, I, if I update a parameter, um, I, the, my, the power core will report back that that change happened. Probably want to put that back to 6,500. Um, okay, so that's the software. A little bit about the, what I've got going on here. This was originally a SaneSmart uh, CNC uh, little tiny desktop mill um, that was constructed out of this 8020 style uh, 20 by 20 aluminum extrusion. Uh, and I've, it's basically all the same. I'm using still the same motors and everything. Um, and I just kind of made out of, uh, the, again, the same aluminum extrusion made um, a C frame um, where the wire can go. And then above that, sits the new wire spool and then where when the wire is done it gets used up and it gets spooled over here um, so let me get the wire running and i'll show you what that path looks like and how that all works so if i go s 800 m3 to start the spooling um, and i have to turn on uh, the motor for the, the, the waste spool. And that also turns on um, this little weird mechanism that I came up with up here, which uh, is just a little motor and two, you know, pulleys that are sandwiched together to pull the wire off the spool. 
I found what can happen is that the wire, um, when it gets off to the side of the spool, it'll um, be at a higher temperature, uh, sorry, tension, and then it'll snap back to the center position and releasing that tension. And that tension um, just gets forwarded all the way through or that change in ten tension. And um, you really wanna have your tension as consistent as possible for a very consistent cut. So I came up with this little system where the wire will get um, pulled off of the spool, um, fed up through to uh, what I'm calling the accumulator, which just has a little um, potentiometer back there that, um, that is doing a feedback loop uh, with a little Arduino in here um, so that when, um, when the accumulator is low, it feeds more wire in. Um, yeah, and so it's just a constant feedback loop. Um, and then there's basically no change in friction here because um, the, the wire is, 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 is almost touching nothing. It's almost held in free space inside of there. You can't really see, obviously, because the wire is so small. Uh, once it comes out of the accumulator, it comes down um, into the front of the frame where there's two rollers that I can adjust the tension of um, just by turning those uh, wing nuts. As it comes down, I'm running flushing water right now, so um, you can see the, the water moving. Um, but it comes down, maybe I can shoot it through the tank here. Comes down through there, and then the wire just rubs across um, a smooth head of a bolt. Camera, focus. And, uh, and then that's where the electrical contact uh, comes for the cathode, and then it will roll over the, the V-groove bearing through the flushing nozzle and then down to another roller, um, back along the bottom of the frame to another roller in the back. And then what's doing all the magic back here is just a standard stepper motor um, with a gearhead on, on and then a gearhead meshing to it uh, and that's uh, what pulls the wire around the frame and then um, just expenses it into this PTFE tube that runs up. And the waste uh, spool and motor pull it onto this waste spool. Uh, the waste spool motor is what you hear right now. It's the loudest part. And it just runs faster than this, but it's on a, a rubber belt that can just slip. So uh, depending on whatever speed I set, it doesn't matter. This will just always have kind of a constant tension pulling it onto the spool. Not the greatest solution, but it works for now. Maybe in the future I'll implement some sort of wire cutter or something. For the power core, uh, the main upgrades here are the, over in the bottom left over here, um, the FET driver, um, little circuit. Uh, basically, it's just a, a single IC FET driver on a little breakout board there. Uh, that allows me to turn on and off the uh, FET a lot faster, allowing me to be a lot more efficient um, when I do higher frequencies. Right now I'm only doing about two kilohertz with this wire, but I hope to be doing more um, uh, with, with better um, flushing and things like that. And, and maybe it'll depend on what material I'm cutting and things like that. But right now if I go over 20 um, or over two, I end up uh, breaking the wire. It's, it's just too much power but I can do to the 20 and the FET is still cool. Um, and then over here is a um, 1.3 megahertz uh, INA, um, a current sensor with um, you know, a one milliohm uh, sense resistor there. Um, so this is providing a lot better uh, resolution of the current than the onboard Hall Effect style current sensor does. And so I just wired this up in its place. Um, so with this, um, and then what I did is I, I uh, rewrote the code for the PyPico um, using C and the, uh, the uh, Pico SDK um, so that I could have faster um, control of the PWM and ADC. And what I've done is I've set it up so that um, when the PWM wraps, in other words, it starts back at the beginning, I fire an ISR um, which uh, tells the um, ADC is uh, to start running, and I, and, I, and I set up the DMA so that I um, pull out uh, samples from the ADC as fast as I can, which is with, what the PyPico can do is uh, two microseconds every sample, um, which is you know, 500 kilo, uh, samples a second, which is just fast enough to get me enough information about that spark. So this, the spark that I'm running, I'm running an on time of 20 microseconds fixed. So if I change frequency, I'm still always doing uh, 20 microseconds on time. 
I found that that's a good balance for long enough to discharge all the uh, capacitors um, during a spark, but um, in a short condition, you're not just pushing excess current, you know, through the uh, through the power resistor. Um, so that was kind of like the shortest on time that I could do and, and still deplete the capacitors, which is what you want to do, um, to my understanding. Um, but so that 20 microseconds on time with this ADC setup and the DMA, I can get 10 samples um, of, the, of the pulse. Um, and that's enough uh, for me to determine, uh, you know, what was the, what was the average current, um, what was the charge, I can calculate charge, and I can determine was that a good spark or was that a short or a no spark. Uh, maybe later I can post some waveforms of what that looks like. But um, uh, then coming out of the front, I have um, the the short indicator, which I'm just you know driving high or low, so three v three or zero. Um, so three v three normally, but in a short it'll drive it low, and that just comes over to the um, to the at mega or sorry the um, mega two five six zero, um, and that like I said earlier feeds back into the software, letting it know that the short happened. Uh, and then it will back up along the G-code. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get this cutting real quick and I'll show you what this all looks like. So um, I'll go ahead and kick on the power supply. And then let's just take a look where we are. You can see there the nozzle right next to the side of the uh, piece of aluminum there right now. Brand new clean water in here, trying to make it as clear as possible for you guys to see. Um, so let's go ahead and hit start on here and then we'll watch for this to start. Okay, there we go. We got a nice consistent uh, cut to begin with. And then what I can do is I can push um, mist here, which actually enables my uh, interpreter of, uh, of a short. Um, that's what will enable the, the backing up. Um, so in the control panel over here, you can see that the spark is not at 100%. It's meaning that I could go faster. There's pulses that are happening that aren't sparking. So what I'll do is I'll come over and I'll increase the uh, feed override um, and just up it a little bit. And what you'll see happen is that spark percent will start to go up. So I know that with this material at this thickness, um, with this power, I can do about 10 uh, millimeters per minute. Uh, I don't know what that glitch is. That's, that's new. Um, yeah. Uh, but, uh, so, and you can see that there's no shorts occurring. Um, sometimes, I mean, this software only updates five times a second. Um, sometimes a short can happen so fast that it won't even be reported here. Um, and if it does, maybe what you'll see is the pulse frequency will actually drop. You'll see, an, a, 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 oh, there it was, a momentary drop down to 500 uh, hertz. And that's to um, hopefully protect it so that the wire won't break because that, at 500 hertz, um, I can't break a wire. Like I could be in a dead short and I wouldn't burn that wire up. Um, so let's take, go back and look at that cut. We've already made some pretty significant progress now. And so this is a quarter inch aluminum that we're cutting through here. Um, again, at yeah, about 10 millimeters per minute feed rate. And the wire, it really is not moving that fast. You can see there, that's about the, the rate at which the, the spool is un, unwinding. So there you go, guys. I just wanted to give you an update of the wire EDM machine here that we've got uh, going and, and the changes that I've made to the software and, and to, the, to the Power 4. Um, I hope to be posting uh, the code and uh, some schematics uh, for the power supply here soon. Um, I just wanted to do a better job of documenting um, and, and putting together those schematics. All right, see ya, bye.